Hi everybody, this is the Edge of Eternity and my name is Bill Cameron. I want to welcome you tonight to the Sunday night service in the garage. We're going to discuss tonight a few things, but first I want to uh, bring you up to speed on some other items. First I want to thank everybody who watched the service last week and through the week this week for the uh, interview I did with my wife. If you haven't seen that video yet, please check it out. It is titled Special Interview with Debbie Cameron and it talks about her faith, her view of God and the Bible. And I think you'll find it uh, very enlightening. Another one I want to bring up is uh, My Car Shop. Mike over at My Car Shop. Last week I asked everybody to uh, help push him over that 1,000 mark. He was really close. And thank you, any, any of you who helped with that because he did hit that mark this past week. And uh, thank you very much. And go check out My Car Shop uh, right here. My Car's Shop. Cars with a K. And... And, and shop with a P. I just didn't put that on there for some reason. So check that out. You're going to love it. This guy is is really, really a great fabricator. Uh, and then finally, uh, NZ Mopar. NZ Mopar, uh, Minnesota Outlaw Customs. They're teamed up. Um, I just checked. Glenn is at 999 subscribers. Somebody pause this video right now and go click subscribe on Glenn Ridd's channel, NZ Mopar, Minnesota Outlaw Customs. You will not be disappointed. Glenn is fantastic and a great, great teacher. I think you will uh, all be glad you did and keep up with his videos. Now, finally, BCCOA, the shop, that's Mr. Bullet. <clears throat> Go check them out, and specifically, there's a video I want you to see. But uh, I call uh, I call him Mr. Bullet, and he is really a jack of all trades and a master of every single one of them. Uh, it's amazing what he can do in a short amount of time, and uh, he really builds nice cars. And he's got two of them that he's getting ready right now to uh, for the No Name Nationals. So follow uh, BCCOA the shop on YouTube. But here's the reason. Um, this week, he put out a video called Hot Rods in Progress. I will put a link in the top of my description for this. I would really like you to watch this. Very few words, all pictures. But here's the thing. This is what I told him. I said, God takes us in any condition. And he took some cars in some pretty rough condition and turned them into something beautiful. God takes us in any condition, no matter how beat up, battered, and hopeless, and he restores us to better than new because he loves us. And I was, as I was watching it, I was thinking of this phrase that was coined by St. Francis of Assisi. And he said, preach the gospel often. When necessary, use words. Put yourself in the position of some of these cars and see how the person who's doing all the work on them takes them from rust buckets in beat up cars to beautiful premium vehicles. That's what God does for us. And he does the work. It's a great video. I really, really would like you to see it. So anyways, um, thank you, Mr. Bullet. Everybody go check out BCCOA, the shop. Um, so for tonight now, if you ever wanted to ask, why would I want to be a Christian? I think pretty much everybody has probably asked that, and some have said, yeah, I think I'll do it, and others have said, nah, it's not for me. Well, we're going to talk about that tonight, so we're going to look at five verses uh, and explore this, and then just maybe, just maybe, this will help answer this question for you. Okay, everybody, let's get started. Grab your coffee. We'll get going here. Now, I made this, uh, I don't know if you want to call it a poster or what, but I printed this verse out with my grandchildren's crayons. I tend to use my grandchildren's things for um, examples and, and things like that in some of my videos. This time I printed out the scripture for tonight. And we're going to go over it kind of uh, word by word almost or phrase by phrase. 
and uh, get through this to see why might I want to be a Christian. So this is Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. And it starts out by saying, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith. This uh, word justified, I've told you many times uh, in these videos, justified means that uh, God looks at us after we accept his son, Jesus Christ, and he, said, he declares us righteous. It doesn't mean we're righteous, but he declares us righteous. And that's the beginning of our walk as a Christian. God says, when I look at you, I see my son, Jesus, and therefore you're acceptable. You're welcome into my family. You're welcome to heaven. And uh, so we have that assurance that one, one day it's time for us to go. We go to heaven and not hell. And so this is the first thing that happens, this justification or justified through faith. So it's not by anything that we do, but it's simply by believing and trusting in God. We are justified through faith. So why would I want to be a Christian? Well, one thing, because of this, we have peace with God, okay? We have peace with God. So we take this peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And in this world, there's very little peace. I mean, look it over in uh, Ukraine right now. Of course, everybody's aware of that war that's waging and, and uh, people are dying and it's very, very, it's a very sad time for them. But we have peace with God in our own lives, okay? Sometimes it's a relationship or finances or jobs or getting a fight with somebody or whatever. And um, we don't have peace. But God gives us this peace. He gives us peace that passes all understanding, the Bible tells us. And it's true. If you've known a Christian or if you know a Christian who has been through a difficult time, you may have seen them get through it with a little bit less pain than possibly you would if you haven't experienced Jesus Christ yet. Having peace with God means everything. It, it, it will bring peace into your home, peace in, with your family, peace at work. It's just something that we all want, but sometimes we really struggle to get it. And then we go on through whom we have gained access. Now, I know sometimes in, in jobs that I've worked in, you, you can hardly go see the boss. You know, the boss, I'm too busy and nobody wants to go to his office and knock on his door or anything. But through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace. So we have gained access to God because of this relationship with Jesus Christ. Uh, you may be familiar with the scripture that says, I am the way and the truth and the life. No man comes unto the Father except by me. That is the Lord Jesus, okay? He is the one who's quoting that. In, um, in Revelation in chapter two and three, you will hear him, especially in chapter three, verse 20, he'll says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and have fellowship with him and he with me. And so that fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ is something that gives us access because of this grace to God. Now, let's continue on here. Um, by faith into this grace which we now stand. This grace in which we now stand. What do we mean stand in grace? Hopefully you can see that green line. Hopefully you can read all of this. I don't know. I printed it out best I could. Um, grace in which we now stand. We have grace. Grace is how we come into a relationship with God. Uh, it is by grace that you have been saved through faith and that not of yourself. It is a gift of God, not of works, so that no man can boast. See, through through Christ Jesus, we find grace with God and we have something to celebrate. 
Uh, grace is something that means like um, unmerited favor or a gift just because. Not that you did anything for it, but hey, I want to give you this gift. This is what Jesus does. This is what God does through his son, Jesus. Here, accept my son, Jesus. Because we love you. It's as simple as that. And then we can say we have hope. This is another thing that is really hard to come by these days. Things seem hopeless. Oh, am I going to get COVID? Oh, the economy is terrible. Oh, gas is four and a half bucks a gallon. Oh, man, my, my groceries cost so much. Everything seems like hopeless, like, like we're going to lose. But here's the deal with Christianity. We know the book. We know the end. We know the final result. This life is short. Yes, we will have trials and tribulations. We will have hardships uh, during this lifetime. We do get sick. I know I have a, a, a illness that is permanent. Um, these are things that we have to deal with, but my hope isn't in how good I feel today or, or how great a shape I'm in. My hope is in the future. And that hope is something that we call the blessed hope. One day we're going to be with Christ. And so we can um, boast in the hope that we have. So what does that mean? That means I can say, Satan, no matter what you do to discourage me, I can say whatever happened at my job that was bad. Uh, these things are very temporary. They're only here for a while. I have eternity with God, my Father. And so... This verse says, and we boast in the hope of the glory of God. The glory of God is the Son, Jesus Christ. The glory of God is to give us an eternity that is without end and is without joy and is without tears and sorrow. Um, it's all new and it's going to be uh, a completely different um, state than we're in right now. Uh, right now, we've got the sin problem. But in eternity, future eternity, there's going to be no more sin, period. And uh, it, that is what makes the difference because it's the corruption and things in this world that cause uh, the difficulties and things that we face and we need a way around that. Now he goes on to say here, not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character hope. And hope does not put us to shame. Uh, let's see here. And hope does not put us to shame. This hope that we have is real. <clears throat> it's not, I hope that it's real hope. It's no, I'm positive that the hope that we have is happened. It's already been accomplished by God. And we are just waiting for the time when it becomes a reality in our own life. Uh, that we have this hope. And this hope is not only for then, the blessed hope, like I mentioned a minute ago, but it's hope for today. I have hope. And it's not like this kind of hope that we, I hope I get a bicycle for Christmas, or I hope I get a, a new small block Chevy for Christmas, you know, something like that. It's the hope. It's the, it's a fact. We rely on it like it's already happened. And so we have hope and our hope does not put us to shame. You know how you can say, yeah, I'm going to get this, I'm going to get that. Oh, I hope I get this. Hope I get... Then you don't get it, and then you feel kind of ashamed because you boasted on it and, and all that. We can boast in the hope that we have, and our hope will not put us to shame, or it won't disappoint us, another um, version says. So, because God's love has been poured out into our hearts. So, We know, this is one of those things, and I know I've said this before, but God's love has been poured out into our hearts. Remember that verse, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. God has poured his love into our hearts, and he has done this with his son, Jesus Christ, and through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. Now, um, 
when you when you become a Christian and you begin to get involved with it and you you begin to see that the people that you're uh, with have this same hope, you really develop a camaraderie and you develop a um, sense of this spirit of God living in you that gives you such great assurance that this is real. There is no doubt about it. And you, uh, you see the change in your own life and what's taking place. And you really rely on God's love because it gives you so much strength. Um, how does he do that? Like I mentioned, through the Holy Spirit. Okay, who has been given to us as a gift. What is the Holy Spirit? We talked about it oh, a few months back when we, when we drew the uh, triangle. We had uh, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit on it. And we connected those lines, made a triangle, talking about the Trinity, the triune God. And then we put God in the middle of that because the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are all God. Okay, Jesus Christ, God's Son, is God. Uh, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That Word is Jesus Christ. Because a few verses later it says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So we see that Jesus has always been, from the very beginning, not when he was born here, but before that. But in order for God to send us um, a way to be saved, he sent his son Jesus to be born of a virgin. This is all what Christmas is about and the things that we celebrate at Christmas time. Um, and it's important for us to realize that Jesus Christ is God. The Holy Spirit is God. When Jesus, after his uh, death and burial and resurrection, and he was taken up to be in heaven with his father, he sent to us the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, when we accept Jesus Christ, comes to live within us. And he helps us to learn and teach us and understand the things that the Bible tells us and helps us in any in any circumstance he's always within us you know god is god in us and we can rely on that day in and day out um his presence is really truly with us so through the holy spirit this is how we receive this through the holy spirit that his son uh gave to us now the holy spirit i i explain it like this at the church oftentimes the Holy Spirit is like an operating system, okay? When we receive the Holy Spirit, when we receive Jesus Christ, we, um, we receive a new operating system. He helps us to think differently. He helps us to um, observe things differently. He helps us to understand what the Bible says about a multitude of things. He is the one who helps us to be able to do this. And, you know, because we can have this hope and we can have this peace and we can have this access and all these things that we have through Jesus Christ, our Lord, our lives change. They become more meaningful. Other people become more meaningful to us. We, we get more concerned about others than we are of ourselves and we we just um, become changed. Second Corinthians 5 17 says, if any man or woman is in Christ Jesus, they are a brand new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. I've said this before. He doesn't change your personality. He doesn't change the things you like to do. He doesn't change uh, what the those things that uh, that you hold near and dear to your heart but he puts in a new operating system. He gives us something else to help our thinking and to help our actions. And that's called the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, the gift of the Holy Spirit, some people uh, kind of match that up with uh, the holy roller type image or this or that. The Holy Spirit is simply God residing within us, helping us day in and day out, leading us and guiding us, uh, it doesn't do anything 
to you that you might think, I'm not so sure I want that. Once you have that, you don't want to let it go. God in us, this is what we need. And because God is in us, we can have victory over the world and we can have victory uh, in so many circumstances that we face in life and we don't go through those things alone. So that's about it for tonight. But I just want you to think about being justified by God. That's accepting his son, Jesus Christ, accepting his forgiveness and believing that he gave his life on the cross and rose from the dead to have victory over death so that we too can have victory over death by accepting him through faith and the faith that we have in peace with God. These are all things that God gifts, G-I-F-T-S, gifts to us when we come to know him. All right, let's have a prayer. Father, I thank you so much for this week and uh, that you were met with us here tonight as we looked at these Bible verses. And I pray, Father, that um, my friends who see this would want to say yes to Jesus. And, and yes, I, I want to know more and, and accept this gift of forgiveness and justification so that we are in a right standing with you. Even though we have a lot of work to do, we become into a position of right standing. And thank you for that. Now, Lord, I ask you to bless us this week. Watch over us, each and every one. And we just want to give you thanks and praise for all that you do. In Jesus' name, amen. Everybody, I hope you have a fantastic week, and I'll see you soon.